Welcome one, welcome all. It is rush time. How you guys doing? I'm your host for the day, Tony Gill, and along with me today is the one, the only, Tim Steppens. What's up, Tim? Tony, good to be with you, man, on this this fabulous Friday. How are you doing today? Good, man. It is Friday. It's Veterans Day. Shout out to all the veterans out there. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We know uh, that some of you are veterans that tune into the rush. We thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. Um, we appreciate you. I have veterans in my family. Um, I'm always respectful towards uh, what they did for us uh, and how they protect us every day. So definitely appreciate you guys on this fabulous Friday leading up to Bears Lions. And you know, we got those Bears topics for you guys. Tim, you ready to go? I'm trying to, I'm trying, yeah, I'm ready to go. Technical difficulty, <laughs> technical difficulty of mine. No, it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I had I, my phone kept, I was on my phone yesterday with Ryan and my phone kept flipping over. And then all of a sudden at the end, I just got kicked out. So, you know, <laughs> this is live television slash digital show here people no edits let's go <laughs> no ed hashtag no edits all right our first topic is maybe a guy that you guys haven't really talked about or even considered all right the chicago bears might be interested in a player the la chargers are waving 2019 first round pick defensive lineman gary tillery tim from what you know of Jerry Tillery, um, as reported by ESPN, uh, the uh, the GM kind of in, I'm summing up here, that it was best to part ways both for the team and for the player. He is expected to be claimed um, as he's waived. Uh, you got to go through a specific order when you hit the waiver order, as you guys know in your fantasy leagues. Um, he's expected to be claimed, so he probably won't hit true uh, uh, free agent status. Um, so... There's rumors he is good enough to be claimed. A lot of times when teams would be like, ah, we can see we can work out after the, the waiver order is done. Uh, but it is rumored that he will be claimed. So, Tim, uh, could Tillery be a fit for the Chicago Bears? Well, I'll start with what you kind of just talked about. That, that gives me some pause with the the – Chargers brass was kind of saying today about, you know, it was best for him and the team to move on. Cause to me, that says obviously something going on there behind the scenes that we will surely hear about in reports in the coming days, weeks, I'm sure. Um, but I do think this is a classic move that a team in the bears position should consider at the least, right? Like mm -hmm. whether they do their due diligence and, uh, they don't, they, they find out some stuff they don't want to, or if, if they even have a chance to, like you're talking about the waiver order, but, yeah, man, like you're in a position now where we know this is a rebuild. We we know what you just did at the trade deadline. Like the last X amount of uh, games here, the last two months really is all about opportunity. And if this guy's available, uh, I don't think it hurts at all. And it could be a low cost, high reward move down the stretch to give this guy a shot. Now, I think if if it makes you know financial sense, uh, the Chargers did not pick up his fifth year option. Uh, and then so most likely they weren't going to be want to re-sign him back or come to a, a longer term deal at the end of his contract. Um, he's played in seven games this year and I think only has like about one sack um, as a player. Look, this would fit Ryan Poles' ammo, right? Um, just from the major moves that we've seen him outside of trying to sign uh, Larry Okunjobi, um that ended up, you guys know, uh, falling out. Um, He's known to take – it's not a big swing, but take chances on talented players um, with low risk financially, right? One-year deals, um, taking the swing on a young player. Look, he did it with Alex Leatherwood, a former highly touted Alabama um, line, uh, offensive lineman. Um, even with the trade, right, uh, with Chase Claypool. You know, Chase was a, you know, a highly touted second-round pick um, that – the Pittsburgh Steelers were kind of done with, and there's no long-term risk because he's still on the contract for the next uh, two years. So this would certainly fit what Ryan Poles does, uh, taking chances on talent. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all for taking uh, risks uh, for talent, Tim. 
Yeah, man. I mean, I, I think it's like, for lack of a better word, throw throw something at the wall, throw a lot of things at the wall and see what sticks. I mean, that's that's just really where uh, what they should be doing right now. They should just be, you know, taking opportunities to uh, evaluate anybody on their roster. But let's be honest, there's a lot of these guys here now that are not going to be here uh, when this team hopefully hopes to turn it around and be a, a playoff contender. So with that being said, like, I don't think anybody here – I don't think a lot of guys here, you you uh, just, you know, keep the playing time status quo. If there's an opportunity to see someone who could be better, uh, throw them in the mix, see what they've got. And if it doesn't work mm-hmm. out, it's really uh, – I don't think you lose much there. No, no. I, I don't think you lose, you know, anything uh, by, by claiming him if he's, you know, available. Um, if there's rumors that, you know, he – is attainable in terms of a team, multiple teams wanting him. That may not necessarily mean the Bears uh, would get him, but I wouldn't mind taking a swing. Look, this defense is depleted, right? So they're going to need to find out if there are any pieces there for the long term. They need about six to seven starters on the defense. Um, They need to find those guys. And if uh, there's one that you think that has the talent, um, to be there, you know, I don't, I don't see why not. There's no risk to it. I mean, he's not – he doesn't seem like there's any off-the-field issues. I think that's probably the biggest thing, right, is like does he have any off-the-field issues that we don't necessarily know about in the public that the Chargers know. But I don't think that is the case here. I mean, unless I'm wrong, fingers crossed. Uh, but if, if if he's out there, why not? Yeah, I think I, – I wonder if we're going to hear more about why this – move happen though in the coming days so that's something i'm going to be keeping an eye on all right our next topic justin fields lions this sunday in an ordinary scenario right this game would not be on anybody's radar for anything even chicago bears fans like yeah the bears are playing but if you know let's say this was marcus Mariota going up against you know, the, the Detroit Lions, I don't think anybody would be interested. But Bears fans have something to let go for. Um, now, the question is, can Lions defense stop Justin Fields? But I think Bears fans are are excited to see what's the next step uh, for Justin Fields uh, going into the game where he, you know, was breaking records with, uh, with the run game. So will Justin Fields have another big game against the Detroit Lions? hopefully through the air. I'm going to make this question specific. Through the air, is he going to have a big game? Well, that's – you know what's really funny about all this is – I know Aaron Rodgers is not having an Aaron Rodgers-like season, but he he played horribly against Detroit last week, like three interceptions. Mm -hmm. But Detroit's defense is statistically the worst in the NFL. Tony, we were Mm -hmm. talking before this. Yards per game, points per game. So in that sense, as bad as Aaron Rodgers and – uh, the Packers season has gone. That was very surprising. I would expect, you know, this to probably be one of Fields' best passing games. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the, a lot of fans and I'll just say a lot of fans and even my, my own, my friends, whatever, we can get tripped up in the, the number of passing yards, but well, you don't, you got to consider uh, the number of attempts, of course, but also just how many rushing attempts and how that has got a big chunk of the, uh, the play calls right now. So, uh, the passing yards, like I don't think he has one of those classic games yet, like the 300 yards and 350, whatever. This mm-hmm. seems to be one, if you were going to pinpoint at this point in the schedule, that he could do that. Uh, granted, it, you know they're not going to just abandon his strong running ability, but this seems like one going in where maybe this is the 300-yard game that we've kind of been looking for. Yeah, I mean, um, this, the aspects and the elements seem to be right for Justin to have a big, you know, a big throwing game. Um, but here's here's what I think. They can't fall into the the trap, right, of we got to do this now. Like, we showed off his legs. We got to make sure that he is a pocket passer and continue to do what's best for Justin Fields. If that means running a little bit or, you know, going about the game, the same game plan that they had last week on the ways to attack um, a defense, I don't say why not you know he did have three passing touchdowns like let's not forget that he did pass for three touchdowns it's just the yardage uh wasn't there and again it's not all on him right like 
he's still getting used to Chase Claypool. But, you know, before that, there wasn't really many options to throw to. Cole Komet is starting to get into uh, the flow of things. The offensive line, we all know, we all discussed it through the offseason and up to now that it isn't the greatest. I don't want to pretend just because that they're playing a bad defense, uh, statistically the worst defense in the NFL, that they try to be something that they're not. They're not a great passing team. Let's just be honest with that. So expecting 300, 350 yards, I, as much as I would like that, and much as I would be surprised, pleasantly surprised if that was the case, they shouldn't be trying to be, you know, and air it out. That's just not who they are. They need to win this game. I would like to see some progression in the passing game for Justin. I'm not expecting, you know, a 300-yard passing day, though. That's just me. No, I'm with you, and I see some of the comments, too, like uh, TD's count, not yards. He doesn't need to have a 300-yard game uh, to be effective. Chill with the stats. I'm I'm with you. I, I've been defending Justin Fields to people who are pointing out these stats. That was my point. Like, mm-hmm. everyone in the last three weeks trying to pick apart the success and the, the obvious growth is, well, he's not throwing 200, 300 yards. It's like, well, when you're, a chunk of your uh, possession time is, you know, Fields scrambling for first down seemingly every time, not even scrambling, mm-hmm. design runs. Who cares about the passing yards at that right. point? But I'm, but I'm with you too, though. Like, now I was saying this could be the game if you were to pinpoint one where, based on the bad defense, maybe he could go off. But you don't need mm-hmm. to force that by any means because we've seen what works. And and uh, you don't need to just force it and let, let him continue to develop towards that uh, and not in a way where throw 50 passes a game just because it's this team won't be able to defend it, you would think, or you might think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, here, and, and, and when you're talking about the growth of Justin Fields and what should be, it's getting Justin to realize how can we take advantage of this defense. I think that growth of from week to week, look at the film, what can we do to take advantage? If that's passed, then we find ways in our system right now, currently constructed, how to take advantage of that. That's more important than just, okay, we got to pass. Like, no, how are you going about setting up that passing situation that you need? You need to still have a strategic plan um, to know how to take advantage of the weaknesses of the opponent, but also how to do it under what you guys already do well. That's the most important thing. When, you, when you're when you going over the game plan with Matt Eberfus, with Luke Getze, the plan is how do we take advantage with what we do well and how we do well versus – Oh, we just need to pass. That's that's not a game plan. That's not a game plan. It's not going to uh, lead to a better situation for yourself to win the game. How do we get the best chance to win the game under what we do and taking advantage of what they can't stop? Yeah, that's something you didn't see enough of really before the uh, New England game, right? Like the the the, the no design ro- uh, runs, the keeping him in the pocket a lot. I think at some point, like you, want, I'm not going to say don't, he's never going to be a runner. Like at some point, right. I'm, I'm more mean at some point he's going to, you're going to want to see development in the pocket and that kind mm-hmm. of uh, typical quarterback quote unquote, but this is clearly something he has in his bag. It's something that uh, going forward, you're going to want to have involved. It's just that as he develops at some point, you're going to have a mix of it, but you don't need to force it to that point. Let it, let it naturally evolve to that point. Our final topic of the day for all you Bears fans, the uh, the St. Brown Bowl. All right, and and I get it. Like this is uh, this is what it comes down to, right? I mean, you're talking about a couple of receivers that you know haven't made you know big strides just yet, but you know this is what we you know we got to find some nicknames for these matchups to keep us interested. So it's the Equinemius and Amon St. Brown Bowl this weekend. The brothers have a friendly wager going for the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears series this weekend. Uh, what are some of the more memorable brotherly matchups that you can think of, Tim? Well, I'm going to start with a sister matchup. I like uh, Serena and Venus Williams are pr- probably the two most decorated siblings uh, to play in the circuit at the same time, right, of, mm-hmm. of any of these uh, professional sporting leagues. But mm-hmm. uh, obviously, the in locally, we have the Ball brothers, uh, Alonzo, mm-hmm. Lamelo, Leangelo. I think I said that wrong. Um, the Mannings. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> 
Hey, the Contreras is man. Like I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a baseball guy. The Contreras brothers both were uh, all stars this year. The Molinas, and uh, I've got a whole list here. But I feel like if I kept going, I might steal your thunder. So you got any off the top of your head? <laughs> um, you know, in these matchups, like outside of like Venus and Serena, um, and then what the Mannings, there, there hasn't been like a lot of you know places where you can actually go back. Like football, it's tough, right, to actually have a specific back and forth. Uh, between, you know, brothers uh, in that sense, because, you know, a lot of times they play the same position um, where they're not actually going at each other. They are, they'll never see each other on the field outside of pregame and then the postgame, you know, handshakes. Um, but uh, I, I think Venus and Serena is probably the, the one that you would go to uh, in terms of a sibling rivalry, uh, even though Serena just kind of took it and, you know, ran off uh, with it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably the one I, I I would go to in terms of familiar uh matchups. Uh, this one I think it's 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 this one that we're currently talking about. Um, I think Aman is the better receiver, and I don't think it's close. <laughs> I think Equinemi <laughs> Equinemi is uh is like a third or fourth, you know, possibly fifth option. Um, it's just crazy that it comes down to uh. Uh, who, which brother is going to come out, you know, winning this game in a game that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, this was a good comment, not against each other, but the Griffey's father and son. And uh, mm-hmm. I thought I thought of this one, the Curry's, I guess, you know, Seth Curry is not Steph Curry, but I guess if you want to yeah. talk about guys facing each other, I think that's uh-huh. uh, at least one occasion they've squared off. Yeah, they got the Watt brothers. You know, they're both, you know, pretty good. <laughs> TJ is pretty good. JJ is pretty good. Um, yeah, man. I mean, all right. <laughs> like, I, like I, don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to break this down in terms of like the, the matchup between Equinemius and and, and Amon uh, Amon Ra. It's just more unique name. I thought somebody saw uh, said in the comments uh, one of the more unique names. In terms of brotherly matchups, that you know, I, I I tend to agree with. So, yeah. What's your What's your prediction for uh, the game, Tim? Uh, Bears offense keeps rolling, and mm-hmm. uh, the defense. I think the defense is gonna give up some points, but I mm-hmm. think I'll give Bears uh thirty one twenty three. That sounds good. That sounds good in my in my head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That, that sounds about right. I think, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. I would say 30, 30, I'll, uh, I'll price is right you. I'll say 32 to 17. Yeah, I think my 23 is way too generous, but I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 32 to 17, Bears is, is, is my pick. There's just, I just don't see a way that they would lose this game outside of maybe some major injuries, but um, the Bears are a better team. Uh, they are a healthier team. Uh, they have the better quarterback um, in this situation. I think we're going to see a, a nice game uh, from Justin. I don't know if we're going to see, you know, records being broken. Again, I have no problem with records being broken, but I just don't see that happening. I see a bigger game for Chase Claypool. How about that? That will be my bold prediction. I see a bigger game for Chase Claypool. Um, I think he has a full week of practice. Uh, I think they're going to get him more involved, you know, especially with some goal line stuff. So, yeah, I, I expect a bigger game from Chase Claypool. That would be my bold prediction. I think you'd take that if, uh, obviously, the win in fields, but that would be a moral victory. That would be one you could take if, if you got that for sure. Tim Steppens, thank you for being on The Rush today. I thank you guys for joining The Rush with us today. We appreciate your time, all your comments. You guys made the show better. Tim, where can the people find you? Well, for right now, Twitter, <laughs> we'll see how that goes <laughs> at Tim underscore Stebbins. But, you know, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> I agree with you. You can find me on Twitter at the Tony Gill. Um, but, hey, we'll see. And Elon is big tripping right now. And I don't know how, how much longer Twitter is going to last. But, look, we're going to have as much fun as we can so far. Make sure you follow us. And uh, we'll let you know what our next move is if we move on from Twitter. <laughs> so we appreciate you guys watching The Rush. We thank you guys for watching The Rush. Make sure you watch Bears. Make sure you watch the the football after show, guys. Come on now. 
that's our big show. That's a big headline show. You got to watch that. Um, we'll catch you guys on Monday all week for The Rush. We'll catch you guys. Peace.